Thank you to Madam Yanti for inviting me. It was a no-burner that I was going to be here. Kindly permit me to stand on all existing protocols. Um, one of the reasons it was important for me to be here is because I have a history with South Sudan, even though this is the first time I've been to this country. One of my bestest friends in high school was a South Sudanese refugee when I was growing up in Liberia. The second one is that when I went to grad school, there was a, an activist from South Sudan who was a pastor, and the only name I remember is Father Matthew. And Father Matthew was my friend, and I used to take care of him. He used to call me Lema, his daughter. So I have a South Sudanese father. And the third one was when Zed was here, I was part of the women that were consulting to work with the, UN, the, the Sudanese women as we were preparing for the peace talks. So this afternoon, what I would like to do is basically talk briefly about my practical experiences working in the women's movement in Liberia and kind of linking it to the South Sudanese process and ending there with some of my learnings. So many years ago, Liberia was synonymous to war. When you hear, heard the name Liberia, you thought about war, child soldiers, women being degutted, pregnant women being killed, rape and abuse, and all of the different things. Small country, less than four million people, and we're able to kill at least 250,000 of our compatriots. The women decided, and we stood on the shoulders. Madam Vice President, you didn't miss anything. <laughs> I was just standing here being pretty, waiting for you. So Liberia, Liberians were able to kill at least 250,000 of their compatriots. There were many women who started the peace movement from church groups to the Marano River Women Peace Network, the Liberian Women's Initiative, and then the Women in Peace Building Network, and we started the Women of Liberia Mass Action for Peace campaign. In 2003, we went to Accra for the peace talks. This is after dozens of peace agreements. And in Accra, we, after months of activism, advocacy, were able to have a peace agreement. One of the problems we as women saw with the peace agreement was that it was very bulky and it was difficult for women to um, understand the content so we knew that no one was going to give it to us easily. We had to. Secondly, there were no benchmarks in our peace agreements. So when we went back to Monrovia, even though we celebrated the agreement, but we went into a room with 80 women leaders, and we spent three days simplifying the peace agreement. In three days, we wanted to take apart where, which areas were the actionable areas? Disarmament, demobilization, and reintegration, when would it happen? And set benchmarks. Civic and voters education, when would those happen? And set benchmarks. Once we were able to do that after three days, we sent out our simplified version to the rural communities where they had networks of women working for peace. One of the things that I know is that for any nation to survive a period of transition, there has to be an active engagement of women in all of the processes. For us in Liberia, it was a no-burner that we needed to own our process. Today, when you look around in this room, you see many international partners, goodwill partners that have been accompanying South Sudan for many years. The one thing that I would like to say to my sisters in here, the partners cannot give peace to South Sudan. The peace that South Sudanese are desiring can only come from here. And so within this period of transition, I was very happy when I heard that the transitional period had rolled back by two more years. It means this is the perfect opportunity for the women of South Sudan to insert themselves and make sure that the remaining 70% of the implementation of the peace agreement, that they have their handprints, 
their footprints and their lipstick prints all over it. So how is that going to happen? One of the things that I always say to people is the transitional period is the period of RE, re, reintegration, rehabilitation, and that RE represents doing it all over again. President Sirleaf and Elizabeth ran in their document on women, peace, and security for UNIFEM at the time. One of the findings of that document was the impact of conflict on women's lives is a reflection of the interaction during peacetime. So what was the interaction in peacetime? If there were inequality and during the transitional period is not addressed, after the transitional period is going to be exacerbated. So this is the perfect opportunity for everything that the South Sudanese women want to start putting their hands on to say this is where we can do it. How is that going to happen? And I'll share my learnings and then take my seat because I know the other panelists have to come one. My first learning as an activist and as someone who has journeyed with you on this process and as someone who worked in Liberia is that in order for us to be adequately involved in the peace and security process, we need to begin by redefining what peace is. I have a definition for peace. Peace is not just the absence of war. Peace is the presence of conditions that dignify all of us. And what are those conditions? And I think if we look at this definition of peace, it widens the peace table. It widens the space for more actors. That definition talks about poverty eradication, economic empowerment, justice issue, education, healthcare, and all of the many things that we need to see. So for women to be at that table, you need to move away from the whole idea of men make war, men should make peace. Peace is not just about militarism. Peace is about all of those conditions that make everyone feel like I belong to South Sudan and I need to be in there. That's the first thing. The second thing that we need to do is to move away from peace tourism. And I'm going to talk exactly to the women. When you've been in war for a long time, it gets so comfortable for you to travel everywhere to every conference and be everywhere but in your country. You won't find peace in New York. You won't find peace in Switzerland. You won't find peace in Gen where peace is here. It's time for us to move away from the peace tourism and focus in the communities, focus on working with the women. One of the best, I gave the examples of our work in Liberia, and some of the sisters who work with me in Liberia are here. We never traveled. We were homebound. We worked from home, and when we were going to Accra, we only took seven women with us to protest, and we were able to build our movement in Accra, and the group in Monrovia continued to work. The third thing that you need is partnership. You can never find peace in a fragmented, community or in fragmented ways. For us to get peace in Liberia, we had to put aside our political differences, our ideological differences, our status and class and all of the different things, our tribal differences and come together. In that moment, we didn't have to like each other. We love Liberia more. So love South Sudan, you don't have to like each other, but you have to love South Sudan more. My, my other learning is that money does not give peace. So every day you're writing new proposals to the donors and say, it's ideas, innovative ideas and strategies that will bring you closer to peace. And those ideas have to be owned by people in the community. Finally, when South Sudan gained her independence, it was exactly 11 years ago, and that's exactly 11 years when I won the Nobel Peace Prize. I sat in my room and cried. I was very happy, not just for all of the people of South Sudan, but especially for my friend who was my high school buddy who grew up as a refugee, for Father Matthew who advocated for peace every day, everywhere for South Sudan, for children who were born in refugee camps and did not know their country. I cried because I was happy that for once, Africa, Africans who have strived for independence had gotten it in my lifetime. My appeal to the women of South Sudan, do whatever you can to ensure that peace is solidified in your country. Be involved in civic and voters education. Be involved in the electoral process. Join political parties. Do whatever you can 
to ensure that this youngest nation of Africa succeed. You have the resources, you have the intellectual ability, you have everything that it takes to make you all succeed. Before I leave, I'll just ask the women of Liberia who came to this conference, who journeyed with me on the peace, during the peace process to stand, let's acknowledge them, give them a moment of thank you for Liberia. Thank you, ladies. And then to the powerful women of South Sudan, don't disappoint your children. It's not about you. It's not about what you want to be. It's about the future of your nation. I thank you.